good day, Tubes. How's she hanging? She's nice and warm in here. Well, it's coming anyways. It's going to be a few minutes uh, until she gets warm enough in here where it's nice. What are we at, actually? Well, I got her set for uh, about 17 degrees Celsius. It's a nice summer day. And we're at uh, about, well, 15 right now. So getting there. A couple more degrees and she'll be all good. But anyways, today we are going to put together this piece finally um, I did get bolts there was a very good comment left on the channel from the last video kind of convincing me not to use a grade 8 bolt on that and I'm gonna read the comment to you because it was a very good comment and uh, <clears throat> we're not gonna use these kind of bolts either I'm gonna use the ones that came out of it and uh, they're a little bit longer, but I think by the time I get the lock washer and I'm going to put a bit of gasket goop on the flangey stuff here and then the gasket itself, I think we should have lots of clearance. So she should hopefully be good. Got everything else is good. We've, of course, changed the little throw-out bearing here. Gave her some, some lube and uh, we basically got to put her together and we got the seal in there. We got to put a bit of grease on there while we put that... Uh, Put her back together and I'll probably grease up a little bit of the race and stuff too, even though he doesn't really need it in there because it's it's like this side, it's all in the oil, right? So it doesn't really need it in there, but uh, we will anyways. So, uh, and then there's the flywheel. We've got the flywheel all done, nice. Uh, cleaned her up real good. I didn't get it um, planed at all, but um, we got a bit of a job to do on this too. We got to change this ring gear. We're not going to probably get to that today because this lovely new workbench I built today is covered in snow now. <laughs> So, next couple of days supposed to warm up. I'll get the uh, the torch going on that feller. And what you have to do basically is, well, we've got to flip it over. Ugh. you got to heat her up on this surface here all the way around. And uh, that'll get it just warm enough that it'll expand a bit, come off of there nice and easy. And uh, put the new one kind of on there, start heating it up, and eventually it'll bling, fall in. So... And we got to make sure we get the ring gear on the right way with the bevels towards the clutch side because the starter comes through this side and the Bendix is on this side, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of backwards. You got to really watch these ones, which way you put them on. So, yeah, because that's actually the way this would be the engine side here. And then this is the, the clutch surface side, right? So that starter is really long and it comes through. You can see it there comes through and uh, the gear sits on the other side and it spins backwards. It's really weird how oh, they did it, but it spins backwards. So, but these are uh, all ready to go. Should be all right. And they're, uh, they're nice in there and stuff. Got all the threads all cleaned out nice and stuff. So, should be beautiful. That is a really cold piece of metal though, let me tell you. It's been sitting in here. Um, I brought in this uh, shifting forks assembly here too and uh should have probably replaced this guy too but i can probably brace or something in there a little bit and bring that back to where it should be or something um but this arm see the bend in it i've seen pictures and i think that's been bent that will definitely change your adjustment on your pedal i have to do some more research i can see if i can find a picture in my manual there and uh we'll see if we can uh figure out if that thing's bent or it looks like it's kind of bent this way too and that's probably not good you can almost kind of see that bendage there but uh, anyways we'll get you on TP here and uh, we're gonna get this thing assembled here anyways today and uh, the new gasket that we made up sweet worked good and uh, we'll get her get her into the tractor and put her back together awesome okay so I like this uh, where did I put it now here <laughs> I like this uh, gasket making stuff. It's really hard to find around here. The only place I can get it actually is at the John Deere dealership. I can maybe order it online, but I've looked too and it's hard to find. There's not much in there either though. 1.69 uh, ounces, 50 milliliters. But the cool thing is you really don't need a lot of it. So I'll just put some on. Oh, if it's going to flow for me or not. You might need some warming up first. Put it in the pocket for a minute or ten. Now this stuff is uh, 
kind of cool because it turns into like a silicone, but it doesn't harden until there's the absence of air. That's what the anaerobic means. So it'll stay gummy and nice until you want it to. Uh, I think I should have put it in my pocket for a little bit and warmed it up again. <laughs> it's a bit cold in here. I just turned the heater on not too long ago. But you don't need to smear a whole bunch on it because the more you smear on, the more it's going to want to smear out. So I just put a bit on and then just spread her around a little bit. Then the gasket itself will... Uh, you could get that uh, tacky stuff for the gasket too, but... I like this stuff because if I was going to drive this thing, like, say, right away, you don't have to let this stuff set up. It'll just kind of set up even with the oil in place there. So that's kind of good. Try to get her smeared somewhat. Somewhat uniformed. This stuff also is nice too because it helps hold the gasket in place, right? And that definitely makes a big difference. Okay, that's not terribly too bad. Smear a little more around here. That'll work. Okay. So that side's good, and then I'm just going to sm smush this thing on here. And then uh, we'll do the other side here as well. Smusher. Smusher. There we go. Okay, the tube of stuff again. And you get some on both sides of it, right? Stuff works really good, but up here in Canada, ooh, it's not cheap. Twenty-eight bucks for that too. If you can, if you can believe that, it's twenty-eight dollars. Ooh, it's expensive. But it does work pretty good. And then we'll smush all this on the gasket here too. So yeah, I did some measuring with the micrometer thingy there, the, and uh, I think the uh, I think there'll be lots of room. Well, should be tons of room really for those uh, those bolts that we had that came out of the Sherman. They looked a little long to me, but I think by the time the gasket's in and we get the lock washers on too, which makes me wonder if I should put a bit of lock. Um, thread locker on there too, like some blue stuff maybe. That will kind of seal those threads up a bit too, right? So that's good, that's gooped. And we've got to grease up this shaft now. Um, now, I don't have my bearing grease here, but I got other grease. Give me one sec here, I'll grab them. this stuff here and that'll work so what we want to do is uh, you can see there yeah you can see there you just want to grease up this a little bit oh man it's leaked all over on me here but stupid grease gun leaking all the oil out okay I'll take a bit of my finger in this screwdriver I guess Well, I didn't really use a screwdriver, but that's okay. So we want to make sure we don't roll this seal. I'm going to put some on this race here, too. Even though all this from behind the seal here gets uh, lubed from the transmission oil. So that should be good. 
And that's our shaft. This all gets lubed. This is the ceiling surface here. It should maybe grease him a little bit. Just grab a little bit more here. Get on there, you. There we go. Try to get some of the grease off my fingers so I don't uh, carry it all around everywhere. And hopefully we don't roll over the seal here because this is the important part. I think we're going to make her all right here. I know you can't really see that in there, but we didn't really like that fit there. It didn't seem like it fit too nice. <laughs> it might leak again. Maybe that shaft is all wore out. Hopefully it's not going to leak, but uh, that is it. She is installed. All right, well, let's get into the shed there, into the container, I guess, and uh, we'll get this lovely piece all refinished, installed. Okay, this is gonna be the tricky part. I'm gonna take my coat off in here. I don't know how well I'll be able to get in here and get you guys in here, as I'm in there, if you know what I mean. So we'll try our best. And I don't think this thing has an up and down. I don't think it. I don't think it matters. Either way, it should still work. So, all right. Well, let me get myself in closer. Get a bolt ready here too. In installed. not too tight. I don't know why that would be a tight fitting on that housing there, but it feel, felt kind of tight. Okay, we got all four in. Let's see here. Start to uh, crank them in a little bit at a time, I guess. No, I don't have torque specs on anything. The book doesn't tell you anything on torque specs, so I'm just gonna go. Boy, that doesn't feel like a very nice fit. Some gasket goop go out there. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to get a. You have to get a torque wrench in there with a huge long bar on it. And hopefully, 
and we've got no play left here now. And I couldn't put a whole pile of torque with this socket wrench on here anyways. Those were uh, pretty darn tight on the Sherman. It's probably weren't torque to spec anyways. But it is only cast. And I forgot to read you that comment. He said, don't use grade 8 bolts in there, basically. And it was really well explained. I'll read it to you after here. Hopefully everything's spinning still. Now that's a bit floppy yet, but it's still got to go in that bearing in the, uh, in the flywheel, and that should be all right. I don't think I can get those much tighter. Oh. I've got the lock washers on there anyhow. Oh. This one is... Uh, oh. That's not too bad. I think we'll live with that. Everything's spinning, that's good. And it's fairly tight against that. It's a little, well, it might change once we get the, the flywheel attached here, right? The flywheel right on everything. All right, so yeah, that uh, shifter fork, might have to do something with it, because I don't think that's right. That's got to come right up between there, so when you push your clutch, it pushes on this thing and that uh, pushes on those little paws on the, uh, on the clutch plate itself there, the pressure plate releases everything. So, All right, hopefully we get no leaks. <laughs> Better not. Bloody seals in there, it should be, oh, that's buried too, isn't it, really? Can you look at that? That's in there a long way, <laughs> just to go in and change a bloody seal. Bloody nuisance. Bloody seals. But uh, yeah, that should be good. See, the new kit for the clutch comes with the alignment tool, but I could have done the clutch part first and used this guy and then tighten up that pressure um, pressure plate and everything. And this uh, bearing service here is a lot nicer on this shaft than the other one. It's all grooved in there. If you remember the, the grooves in here, it was really bad. So, But uh, that should work good. And that thing will hit that those poles on there and start spinning, right? And then it, boom, and it stops. So it's got quite a movement though. I don't know if I like that. I don't think it's supposed to do that, is it? Uh, hmm. I hope that's right. Seems like it's got a lot of movement there, but I guess with the shifter fork there, that'll keep that from spinning. So it should anyways, because it's all, you know, there. Um, okay, well this end I guess we'll say is good to go. I just hope this other cover here isn't leaking too. There's um, another bearing and all the gearing in behind there. I really don't want to get into that. That would really suck. <laughs> but um, anyways, all right. We are good in here. I think that is about, about it. So I gotta look up this shifter fork. I'm gonna go read you this comment too that uh, was left, it was pretty good. Okay, this comment was uh, left by a fellow by the name of Bob Green. If I don't mind, I said your name. Uh, anyways, that's what it says on YouTube. <laughs> anyways, he says, uh, those Ford bolts are the correct grade tensile strength for cast iron. I never thought of that because that's going into cast iron so you don't wanna rip on them too hard, right? The tensile strength is not uh, a hardness of the bolt, it's how much further it will stretch under tension before it snaps. The wire that the bolt is made from is stretched through a die to a point of being its strongest before the thread is cut or rolled into it. Uh, the calculation and grade of bolt uh, is determined at what point it will not stretch anymore, hence using a torque wrench, uh, which I didn't do. Oops, I don't have a torque value for that. I have no idea what it should be. Maybe 50 pounds, I don't know. I doubt I would have put that much onto it though, because um, I, I couldn't, I was, it wouldn't go anymore. <laughs> so, and it still seemed to be spinning, which is good. But uh, anyways, um, uh, if you cut a thread on a mild steel bar, it will stretch without any effort and be no use to the fitting. Uh, if you overgrade a bolt in cast iron, getting an 8.8 .8 tensile strength, 
you may pull the threads out of the cast without trying. It's interesting, eh? Stuff to think about there. That's a, that's a, I really like this comment. It was a good one. Um, cast iron has no tensile strength. Stick with the original bolts and shorten the original ones that have no clearance. If you heat a seized nut or bolt to cherry red to release it from the fitting, rust or rust, um, you have to read you have to reduce that bolt or nut back to a soft untensile steel uh, and it will snap under original torque settings. So that's interesting. If you heat it up, it'll end up breaking it. Uh, you must renew that bolt or nut. Uh, just my two cents worth, 60 years of iron and steel industry in Sheffield, UK. So there is a serious science to tensile nut and bolts. Tensile strength in nuts and bolts. So, uh, slow but sure, we'll get your job done, stay safe. So, anyways, thanks Bob, that's a really good comment. I never thought of that, I thought, you know, oh, I better, it's hard to get in there, I want to put a stronger bolt in, and let's put a stronger bolt in. So, good thinking though, I never thought that that would be an issue. So, I used the original ones, put them back in, and um, I did measure it, everything, and it actually worked out pretty good. It might have stuck out a little bit, but I don't think it's long enough to hit those gears back there. And it turned, seemed to be fine, so. So, that's good. So, but yes, this thing, and thanks for that comment. Thank you for that comment. That's a great comment. Oh, geez. Uh, so this thing, I, I don't know what I want to do with this. I got to research this thing. I don't think it's supposed to be bent. It looks like it's kind of bent inwards too. And then it needs that brazed or something to bring it back to uh, the, uh, the spec for that little pin that's supposed to go through it. Because you can really see the... You can really see the wear on that side. <laughs> it's almost wore through. So, I don't know whether I'm gonna tackle that or um, see if I could just get a new one or replaced one from the guy there and uh, from the tractor guy. But uh, I'm gonna do some research here and see what I can find. All right, just looking through the book here to see if there's any non-drawn pictures. A lot of these are well, for, for the day, you know, they didn't draw them too bad, but, so, but I want to actually see if I can find a picture picture of that side. I mean, back here, there's... Back here, there's a picture... Like there. It's kind of hard to see, but... Of... That little rod. It doesn't look bent there, but I don't... That's not a... I don't believe that's a real picture picture. I like to find a real picture picture, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if I can have any luck here, though. Uh, there's what we're going to have to take off for the steering. So that's interesting to see. This is the top cover I want to take off next here when we get the rest of it back together and it's on its own feet again. This, this cover... Um, yeah, there's the start button. This whole top cover I want to take off. So anyways... A starter switch. That's a generator. Ooh, generator. No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. There's a governor. So some real pictures here, but of course they're on the other side right now. It's on the other side. It's on this side, but they didn't go back far enough. That's taken the, the grill off. Grill of my dream. Uh, rad hose, we're going to need one of those too, eventually. Sorry for the heater going there, it's keeping me nice and warm though. Um, anyway, so that's not engine stuff, pulling sleeves, ring grooves. There's some, yeah, still engine stuff. Clutch, this might show it here. Maybe not. It's missing there too in that picture. Oh man, there's all the transmission gears there. Uh, well, here, there's a picture over there. That to me looks straight. It looks straight, but again, it's not a real picture. It's a drawn picture. I might just have to look up some pictures on the internet. That. Mm, I got it. No, well, yeah, it's here too on this picture. Uh, let's see if I can get you in there to that one. See, it looks fairly straight there too. So I think this one's had a bend in it. Or they hit something. It sticks down there a bit, right? So it wouldn't take much to, to hit it. So 
I might have to try to heat it up and bend her back, and I don't know if I, it's probably cast iron, and it's gonna end up breaking on me then, and then, oh God, it's gonna be a bloody nuisance. And then <laughs> you would have pushed your clutch one time there, and then it, uh, oh boy. Uh, that's all hydraulic stuff again. I'm gonna look up some Google pictures. This probably won't show anything there. Rear axle stuff. There's, there's the bearing puller that I needed right there for pulling the bearings off of that shaft if I was going to replace them. Get underneath it and then pull. Yeah, that's what I needed. Probably could have made something, but uh, they weren't too bad for, you know, if I was going to drive it like a couple hundred acres a year, I would have probably replaced them while I was in there. But, uh, it's, you know, what? it's going to be fired up, driven around here a little bit maybe, and, uh, you know, go to a show if we ever have shows in our lifetime again here. And, uh, so yeah, but uh, oh, there's the top cover I gotta take off. I wanna take this top cover off and uh, clean up this gasket surface all around here and uh, regoup it. For some reason it's leaking out this front and I don't know why. That is really weird, but yeah, we'll get all that off. Doesn't look like there's too much. This top cover here, it's gonna be heavy though because I'm gonna take this whole assembly right off the top of her. And it looks like everything will just kind of come right off once you get the bolts out. Shouldn't be too bad. Get her cleaned up. Uh, I don't know whether I'll cut a new gasket or just use my goop for it. My goop stuff will work pretty good on that too. So it's kind of meant for that really. Flange stuff. And there's, well, uh, there's the clutch side. But no, no. Brakes, power takeoff shafts. There's the, if you're running a a buzz saw on the back of us what you'd run there and then now uh, we're into plowing stuff now well I'm gonna look up some pictures on the internet and see what we can find okay this is really an annoying because everybody takes pictures of that side of the tractor or this side Oh, we can almost see it here. Sometimes the front tire, they get too much in the front here, but the front tire... See, that one... That one looks straight. So that would definitely, definitely, definitely change where... See, this one, I can't see it for the front tire. That one's the other side. There's a very unique one there. Look at that one, eh? Oh, I'm going to move you up a little bit here. That's a very unique one there. Steel wheels on it. That's no good. Uh, I could almost see this one. Not a very good picture though, but mm, looks straight. But yeah, being right there, it wouldn't take much to ding that, right? That one's covered. It's the wrong side. Uh, that one looks fairly straight too. Well, I got a... Oh, there's a good one. Well, that one's definitely straight. So, that's the side. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference. How much bent back that one is compared to that one. We gotta change that. You can you can sort of tell there too. I think when it starts to lean back more this way, it means your clutch is getting more because our uh, where it goes back into the back of the tractor, there's an adjuster there, and it's like right to the limit now. <laughs> it doesn't go anymore. So, I gotta also free up that. That one kind of shows it too, and that looks, see that one looks like it's hanging down straighter, so that one's probably, looks like it's been restored, but it's maybe even needing a new clutch, or something else is wore out in that one. But it looks straight anyway, so I think I'm going to have to try to straighten this thing. There's one there, it's hard to sort of see that one. See that one's leaning forward more, right? That means I think it's in a better shape. I think, anyways, I'm pretty sure. Um, ooh, look at this one. It's like way back. <laughs> that one definitely needs some clutch work, probably. But anyways. It's be interesting to see where ours sits whenever we get it all smushed back together. Well, that's a that's an 8 and I can tell by the, the pedals on it. i move these up again. I'm hitting the tripod. Here, hang on. There we go. Oh, there's another old steely wheel. I'd love to find one that would be so hard on the tracks. on the Or on the trailer, sorry. I guess you could... Probably just put steel wheels on. That's an 8 in. That's a, that's a 2 in. Oh, look at that, eh? That's neat. There's one there, and it looks 
It looks straight. Mm, okay. What to do? Gosh, you know, I don't know if I... Uh, I think if someone had hit that, it would have been a heck of a lot more of a weird bend. That almost looks like it's... Like it's a really good bend. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm going to maybe not try to straighten that right now. And, uh, wow, boy, how do you ever... How do you ever fix that after if you had to you'd have to split the tractor apart again and you could maybe drill out this pin though and then take this piece off because there is there's actually a little bit of a little bit of play in it there but i definitely need to try to to braise that and then re-drill it to the size of the pin because uh there's definitely some extra play in there i don't really like you know, for the, for the pin itself. <sighs> Do that or see if I can get another one, but the other one might be just as wore out as this guy, right? So hard to really say. But I don't know whether I want to get the MIG welder and or just braise a bit into there and then try to smooth her out, or I don't know if I could get a, a bushing that size, pretty darn small bushing, and just put a bushing into her maybe, but... Um, Many different options. What to do? I don't know. Don't know. But anyways, we'll get her figured out. Well, that's the pin I'm going to use for it. And you can see there's definitely years of slop gone through her. And uh, I looked on the internet and didn't really... i seen pictures and, you know, I don't know. I don't think I want to buy something like this online like that. But uh, it's definitely been some years of wear into that thing. <laughs> Holy jumping, eh? But, uh, like you can almost see right through with the, the cap screw in there, so that's not so good. She, she needs to be bushed up, I guess. This, this bottom corner for sure needs to come up. So I'll have to get her cleaned up real good, I guess, and maybe see if I can braise some stuff back in there, even though the braise is not that strong either. It's, uh, I don't know. But it'll beef her up a little bit. That, or I gotta find a whatever the heck size of bushing that is, but it's going to be pretty darn small because it's got to fit in there and fit this too, right? And that would kind of work, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do there yet. All right, we're going to see if we can do anything with this. I got that uh, inside all cleaned out with a chainsaw file, actually. And uh, we'll see if we can add a little bit of braise to the bottom in here and uh, see if that's going to help at all. So I got my goggles ready to go. I got the uh, get her here over here. I got the small tip there on the the torch guy. So we'll fire him up, and uh, we will see if we can braise a little bit into there. I got uh, goggles on, like I say. Um, need my sparker. Get this guy fired up here. I don't need a whole pile of heat. It's not that big, so. We better not let the bench on fire there, bud. Oh, jeez. Try a little bit of heat there. Might need a little more than that, though. Probably good. We'll get you zoomed back in here so you can get a better shot. You got a better shot than what I got. I can't see nothing. So I figured I'll just braise this, get her all good and red and warm here. Figured I'd just braise it, hopefully this holds. And uh, just a little bit warmer. Now hopefully this holds, like I say, I'm not, if I was gonna drive hundreds of kilometers a year with it, then well we'd probably we probably would have changed it to uh, a new one. Now let's see. I'm gonna have to go a little bit of a time though I guess because uh, Because I'm going to get her too hot in here and then it's... It's 
not gonna build up for me, right? Let her cool a minute. We gotta get a little bit over here. This white stuff that they put on here, I don't know what it is. It smells like styrofoam when it melts, though. It's really weird. The brazings are really, really good art to learn. I'll tell you that. It takes a bit to get used to it, but... You can get real good at it. Okay, that's probably still not going to be... No, we're not far off there. Maybe I can shape it with that pin. It's definitely getting closer. Still got a little bit yet to go there. Key is to try to heat it up and not melt out what you just put in. Now I got her a bit too cool there and I have to warm it all up again. Let her blend together again. It's kind of like soldering. In a way. In a way it's kind of like soldering. I think I'm too tight there now, so I'm just going to try to smooth it a bit. I'm not cut through it! <laughs> I think I'm needing a little bit right there. It'll melt for me there. There we go. There we go. Pin's starting to get hot here, so. Okay, I'm gonna leave her at that and then uh, let her cool down. And then I can file away at it and see how close we can get her to uh, where we want her there. I just think it's just a bit too hot right now to file it. It's not too bad. It sticks in the file though when it's really hot. Surprisingly, it doesn't take much though. This stuff's not. Oh, that pin's getting hot. <laughs> this stuff's not a real good resolution. But, like I say, if I was going to be driving her a couple hundred thousand, you know, acres, I would probably change it here. But. Oh, drop the pin there, bud. Hot. I'm gonna put it on the vice, maybe it'll cool off faster. You want a bit of play in that though, you don't want her to be snug tight, but you can see it like shaving off, right? Whenever we go, like it's, it's soft, it's not a hard resolution, but. It'll definitely, definitely help. Pretty close there. Really close now. files too you're only supposed to put pressure down when you're pushing not when you're pulling it actually dulls it oh, she's pretty close there Yeah. <laughs> 
And this may not last too long in there like that. Or it might last for years. Darn close. Oh, that hurt. Just on the bottom here, it needs a little bit. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the way that it's bent this way. Well, that's got some play in it still, but it's, it's got a bit that way. Could add a little more to the bottom here and beef that up a bit. Right on. Right on this surface here, it could add a little more there, but I think I can live with that. I'm just not liking how it's bending in. I don't like that. I almost want to heat this up a bit here and just tweak her a bit. But that's good that way, and that way, and that way. It's just I gotta. It's so narrow too, right? But I could add a little bit to it, but I don't think it's gonna make a. Huge whale of a difference. Pretty happy with that. And still got a bit of play there. I don't know whether I'd get it much better than that, but I could probably put a little bit on this bottom here, maybe. Might just do that. Get it warmed up here again. Fire it up! Where'd I put my sparker here? Up. Right on the bottom, I think it was there. And then right in here. Gotta get it all warmed up again. Just put another bit in there. Yeah, settling sure is nice for heating her up fast. I don't even really have it on too hot. I don't need it hot when I get ready to go here. Maybe blend in, there we go. Okay, that's definitely built that up there. Gotta let that cool off a little bit now. And I think we'll be looking pretty good. That pin definitely won't fit now. Nope. Got a lot of filing to do now to get that cleaned out again. Okay, we're working her down. Trying to go a little crisscrossy so it doesn't leave like a high lump in the middle, right?
they feel when it stops cutting. Well, the flutes get covered in stuff, I guess. close shaving the gold off imagine if that was gold it's like three dollars a swipe <laughs> probably gonna miss the old Sherman in there but uh, like I said you know I'm gonna be using her for plowing and stuff and on and off the trailers at the shows or whatever have you I don't really need her going like Mach 20 It's got one little area right there. There we go. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah, it's still got a bit of play in her. I think this is just so narrow, but uh, it's definitely better than it was. A bushing probably would have been even better, but you got to remember it's pulling. Uh, let me think now. There's a, a fork thing that goes through here, and it's got to go through this too. So I think once we get her in and together and then on and tight where it should be, it should be fine. I've got a little bit coming down the front here. Because that will interfere with that fork. would have been a little bit nicer there. So this will be the next part I guess we got to put in and then uh, yeah that should be fine. It doesn't really matter so much there because the fork from the the clutch the actual clutch lever will come on and grab on here so this way won't matter it's the uh, the whole pin moving back and forth we got that tight now so that's good no more sloppies I guess that could actually stay in there it's still a little bit tight but I'll leave it there because it'll wear into that I'm pretty sure but yeah I'm just not liking the, the angle that's going on I'd like to get that straightened out a little bit if I could it's not miles off but it's definitely going in I have to heat this whole thing up red here and then slowly move it over and let her sit but I'm gonna try it like that I guess if I have to I can put it do that on the tractor we'll heat her up there and do her that way but uh, I think that should uh, should help anyways all right so that fork assembly can go back in I guess I'm not gonna do it right now though I'm uh, running myself out of time here so we'll uh, put stuff away clean stuff up Got to keep those in that tube to keep them nice and dry. Um, so I guess our next one, whenever I get the table going outside there, our first initial try on the new table is we'll heat this guy up. Hopefully I got enough oxygen left there. I'm pretty sure I'll be all right, but uh, I'm probably going to have to get another bottle soon here. Anyway, so we got to heat this guy, like I say, all up. 
and that'll that ring will expand. It'll basically fall right off. And uh, get the new one. And I've got the new one. Over here. I believe it's in this smush box here. Yes, it is. Ooh, and I got some belting for the rad support. That's what that's for. And uh, my stepdad actually had a spare ring gear. I don't know why, but that's the ring gear right there for that feller. And you can see the bevels. See the bevel on the teeth there on these? Let's see if we can get you a bit closer here. Closer. So you can see that bevel cut there. That's to help whoop, engage the starter. So you got to obviously make sure that you get this on the right way. And actually this would be the right way there. The bevels towards the clutch side because the, um, yeah, I can pick this guy up here now. Oh, the starter sits on the tractor there and it comes through, well, it's kind of hard to show you that, but it comes through on this side kind of thing. And then it sits, I don't know, it's really weird how they, how theirs work, but uh, that's how that works, anywho. And uh, yeah, we gotta exchange that guy for this one. Something you do while you're in there, it just makes sense. And uh, even though this one's not too bad, but it's got some chewings over here because this one I don't think had a bevel. Doesn't look like it, so it'll definitely help the length of the life of your ring gear. That's what you want. Life.